So everything set up for taking the photo here today. So, Bill, are you ready to have a little chat about all this stuff? Hey guys, so I'm here with Bill Lemke and he's a quite well-known photographer of deadheads and he's from Wisconsin, USA. He's uh, putting a book together of photos he took in the 1980s in America at Grateful Dead concerts and um, I was lucky enough to be photographed by him back then. And yeah, Bill, can you tell us a bit about your project and like how it started and what you're doing with the project? Sure. Uh, like Jody mentioned, back in the 80s, I, I, would, I went to a lot of Grateful Dead shows and what really interested me was the audience and the diversity and just the kindness of people in the parking lots. And I just felt like it was something I really wanted to document. And so that's where the, the project originated, and I would set up in the parking lot at dead shows and put up a big tie-dye backdrop and photograph people, and I happened to photograph you around 1988. That's where we met. And so I accumulated maybe 160 images at that time. And then they got put on a shelf for a while until somebody contacted me that I had photographed back then and said his daughter had grown up since then and he wanted another picture of of them that I had done then but then we, we kind of planted the seed about how interesting it might be to have a photograph now as well mm -hmm. and so, so like that before and after kind yeah of thing, right? so that really cool. kind of set off a, a spark for me and I thought that could be a really interesting project yeah the trouble is right. there was no internet in the 80s and so finding people again was going to be an issue mm -hmm. Um, fortunately, my wife is pretty good at Facebook and social media, and so she sent out the word through several different Deadhead websites, and little by little, people started contacting me, or somebody said, I knew this person, I see them on your website, here's your contact information, and, and so it grew, and so far we're up to maybe 25, 26, 27 people that we Rephotograph mm -hmm. with at least a 30 year gap in between. And my wife had been in, Jody, in contact with Jody for several years before we could finally work out the details that we could get here to Thailand and make this happen. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's been really fun. It's uh, a brief meeting 30 plus years ago has turned into basically a 30 year friendship. So we've talked about trying to find a place on this planet where we could be at the same time for a couple years now and we talked about Mexico, Thailand, we talked about I think some Possibly places Canada. in Europe, Canada, <laughs> or some, Europe, yeah, yeah I, I think Carmen mentioned like maybe Croatia and Spain and things like that, we talked about all these different options and then finally it's happened so we managed to catch up. So, and you've and can you say something about your camera? So I still work with the old film camera, large format, four by five inch negatives, which meant bringing a lot of equipment over here to Thailand, but that's kind of the nature of the game. I, I photograph a lot in other countries and always have to carry my equipment along. Uh, the ultimate goal here is to actually publish a book. Um, we have a, a writer currently interviewing people and his accumulating some stories. Um, so we're looking for a publisher at this point, and in the meantime, we will still capture as many other people as we can. The camera looks like something from the 1800s, but 
It has not changed from the mid 1800s. The camera I have was probably made in the 90s, eight, <laughs> 1990s, um, but they still make view cameras the same way. But that's the original camera, right? It's the original so it must camera. be from. Well, I, the 80s, I did update right? it at one point. I still have oh. the original camera. Ah, okay. But I, I bought another one as well. It's got a ah, couple see, little features, yeah. the first one. It's the same it. type. Yeah. Same type. So Same manufacturer. Yeah. He has to put something over his head, like <laughs> in the 1800s, to yeah. check everything. And it's a big box, basically, made from wood and brass. And it's, and, yeah, and glass. And mahogany and brass. Uh, and, yeah. Beautiful looking, actually. How much do you think it weighs? Looks heavy. I think it's five pounds, mm -hmm. the camera alone, kind of heavy. and then there's film holders and Wood. light meter and lenses. And mm -hmm. A little bit heavy for backpacking with. It is, I've done it, but it is. Yeah, so Bill's going to go from here to Angkor Wat in Cambodia and then down to Phuket in the south of Thailand with this big camera. And then he's got his normal digital camera as well. And then he's also using his cell phone to snap quick little snaps here and there. So it's, you've got so three devices for photos, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he's using them all. Fortunately, I have a, a wife that's very understanding and helps me a lot with this project. So in the beginning, you said something like you captured about 100 and how many? About 160 people. 160 people. That's a lot of people. It's a lot. Yeah. It was done over several years. So the first time I met you, I'd been awake all night. I think it was after the first, it was, I'm pretty sure after the first night, definitely after the first night at Alpine Valley, 1988, summer tour, yep. Grateful Dead. And I've been awake all night, tripping on four hits of liquid LSD. And um, I definitely got into the concert. I don't remember if I actually paid or if I went over the fence. I cannot remember that part. But <laughs> I danced all the way through the concert, it was pretty far out, and I think I tried to lay down and sleep a little bit at some point, and I just couldn't, so I gave up on that, and then I came wandering along, and Bill had this booth set up, I didn't know what was going on at first, and I kind of came around the side of it, it was next to one of the main kind of access points for people going towards the main entrance of the of the venue and as I came around the side of your setup there I saw you had this big camera and you had this backdrop tie-dye backdrop and you're taking photos of some people and I thought wow very cool because um, I love photography when I was probably about 13 I used to always go to the local library and look through old photography books with Man Ray and stuff like that so I was pretty fascinated by that. And then I was just lucky that you guys thought, oh, maybe this guy could be interesting and you called me over. So I thought, okay, sure, I'll try it. But I'm not very good in front of cameras, I think. <laughs> not very good really in front either. of cameras. <laughs> yeah. Video is different because I can move around. And you can be myself, yourself. But yeah. But with a still shot, yeah, it feel, feels like a deer in the headlights kind of thing. So. How did you find it with handling people to get them to sit in front of the camera? Most people were pretty accepting. There were mm -hmm. a few that just said, no, no, you're, you're yeah. probably a narc and right. I don't want my picture taken. And yeah. Since then, I've, I've exhibited the photographs in a few different places and mm -hmm. I've had people come up to me and say, I remember you. I remember mm -hmm. you were in the parking lot. I was mm -hmm. afraid to come over there. Mm -hmm. I didn't trust you. And now they have regrets because right. they wish they had those images from back then. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the, see, you must have been doing something right because I used to avoid cameras at Grateful Dead shows in the parking lots because, you know, I was doing some stuff that I wasn't supposed to be doing <laughs> without saying too much about that side of it. But, you know, but I know I could see something about it. It was like obvious that you're into the art side of everything. So I'm sure that's what made me feel relaxed about it, definitely. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, really. And then, maybe a few shows later, I saw you again Yeah, in another parking lot of the Grateful Dead show, of all places. I think we crossed paths <laughs> several times. Yeah, and you said earlier, you, you think we 
we saw each other in, at Madison Square Garden. I'm certain we did, yeah. At the Rainforest Benefit shows, yeah. They were epic shows. You could tell you guys a lot of stories about that. I might have to have a different channel to <laughs> start getting into telling all kinds of Grateful Dead tour stories. Uh, I was on Grateful Dead tour, and if you don't know who the Grateful Dead are, you shouldn't be watching this video. But YouTube it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Check it, like on YouTube or Google or whatever. And basically, they were the primo American rock and roll band. Um, you have to check them out to really get what they're about. The probably the first jam band, live shows, right? That's what you got to check. Anyway, I was following these guys around for five years and uh, had some interesting experiences, really some of the best in my life and some of the worst as well. So, yeah, anyway, we won't say too much about the worst ones here, I think, <laughs> but yeah, Bill knows, Bill knows. Yeah. So, um, yeah, basically a lot of people made a life following the Grateful Dead, working, selling, food, at the concerts, selling clothes, at the concerts, jewelry, all in the parking lots, pieces of artwork, illegal substances. It was a unique experience. A lot of stuff. Yeah, there was a whole traveling community. It was like a traveling fair, or like a kind of traveling festival. A circus in a way. Yeah, yeah. So, people lived like that for years on end. That's what I did for five years. That's what took me to all the corners of the USA, except for Alaska. So I basically went through all of the USA during that. And, uh, and the band is still somewhat together. Some of them are kind of slightly together. Yeah. yeah. And some of us are still slightly in, you know, kind of certain ways together in our minds, <laughs> you know, but. I guess, I don't know, I guess I, I guess we're still the same kind of people, aren't we, right? We are. We listen to the Pretty same much. music. Or? And so, what do you think, with the people you've photographed for the second time in the last couple of years, do you think most of them seem to be the same kind of people? I before? think so. You know, their heart is still with the music. Some have become mm -hmm. musicians themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, some have gone on to be professors at universities, all mm -hmm. walks of life, but mm -hmm. we still are all connected by the music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good to hear. Yeah, I've heard a lot of stories about people along the way, and a lot of people didn't make it as well um, from that scene, that lifestyle. You know? And there were people of all different age groups and different backgrounds, but uh, it was really the rock and roll lifestyle. So I think what really got my attention initially too was that it crossed generations. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, I'm pushing 70 years old, and mm -hmm. there I would go to a concert, and there were, you know, people, teenagers, mm -hmm. going with their parents. Mm -hmm. See, you don't see that much at concerts of other types of music. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that was kind of the thing that brought me into it, in a way, I mean, because I was more into, like, the whole 1950s, 60s, beatnik, bohemian, poetry, jazz kind of um, beatnik scene, but it didn't really exist much anymore when I started kind of finding out about it. And then I, I used to read all these things about this stuff, and then I started reading more things about the 1960s kind of scene. So I actually read many, many books about all this kind of stuff before I really jumped into the real thing myself. And then, at the time, I was living in New Zealand, and they had a little kind of hippie scene going on with a lot of alternative music. So I kind of jumped into that scene and playing music myself. But I knew America was the place where all that stuff initially sparked off. And because I grew up as a youngster in America in, the, in my early days, I wanted to get back to America and see if there was still something going on from this time. Yeah, and I thought there probably wasn't. You know, I thought nah, we finished. <laughs> you know, I'm too late. But when I got back to America, I started hearing things about this band called the Grateful Dead, and there were a bunch of cool bands that I'd read about and started collecting records of. 
like Jefferson Airplane and Quicksilver Messenger Service and Big Brother and the Holding Company. I got into all those ones first and other bands as well. And then kind of came around to the Grateful Dead when I went back to America with my family. So, yeah, I was kind of shocked that really this scene had not died out. It was still alive, yeah. Really, I think great. one of the unique things about the band, too, is they weren't in it for the money. Mm -hmm. It was all about the music. Um, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't about being a popular band because they never had mm -hmm. pop, you know, really popular hits mm -hmm. for the majority of people. They really had this niche that they fit into and mm -hmm. that their fans really appreciated. I think that's what kept it alive, really, and kept it going because it was a real community thing. And these days, okay, there's still a community, but okay, I don't live in America anymore. I haven't been there for a while because of various legal issues connected to Grateful Dead tour days, which we won't go into. But uh, yeah, it seems to me like even though there are some remnants of the band around and they play together sometimes and with other people, and sometimes the music's great, you know, and sometimes so-so, from what I've heard, only from listening online because I'm not there, right? But it seems like the sense of community is quite different, I would think. It's changed a bit, but there's still, you know, mm. the the old deadheads right. and the young generation. If you get with the right people, the spirit's still there, right? Yeah. We're hoping that everybody is still alive and well, mm. and mm. Um, maybe we'll get a couple more, but you were basically the last person I really wanted to make sure I touched base with and got that photograph. Mm. So now it's a matter of our writer interviewing the people that have photographed over the years mm -hmm. and compiling the stories and mm -hmm. getting a commitment from the publisher. So we're getting really close. Mm -hmm. ah, I wanted to ask you about, I remember after you took the photos where I first met you, you were able to exhibit some of them in the hallway inside one of the Grateful Dead concerts, right? I did that, about that a couple times. Uh, mm -hmm. One was in Milwaukee mm -hmm. when they played, and I don't remember the year of that. But um, I put up a display and I had photographs hanging and people came by to view them and there were people putting flowers on them. Mm -hmm. And actually when I was hanging the work, I didn't speak to them, but Jerry Garcia came out to check out the photographs. Oh really? Yeah. That's cool. So that was pretty interesting. I didn't get into that show. I was there. I was in the parking lot, I think, the first time you were able to do that. Yeah. Someone told me my photo was in the middle. Yes. You were a feature. <laughs> cool. So yeah. I'm glad to know Jerry saw me there. Yes. He did see me one time out the back of the war field as well when he was leaving, but we didn't speak or we exchanged glances. Uh, I'm glad that he had a look at my photo. Yeah. I hope he's doing well in, in heaven somewhere. <laughs> Jerry, I hope you're doing well. We really miss you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other time I, I displayed the photographs was at uh, a further festival at Alpine, Alpine Valley again. Mm -hmm. And Dennis McNally, who was their publicity manager, had contacted me and asked if I would be willing to hang some work in the pavilion at Alpine Valley. Uh, so I did. I brought the work out, put up my display panels, hung the work. And, uh, at one point, I was talking to this woman about the photographs, and she was commenting on how she liked the images, and not realizing who she was until somebody told me later that that was Jill Lesh. Mm -hmm. And at that concert, I was there setting up the work when the, the band was there to rehearse. Mm -hmm. And so I was one of maybe eight people sitting in the audience while they practiced you know, went through a rehearsal for about two and a half hours. Excellent. And that was a pretty special night. Great. And during the show, I was allowed to, I came out on my motorcycle after that, and I, I was allowed to park backstage. And so I met Bill Kreutzmann, and I talked with him. And, uh, it was interesting, I and mean, he was just a regular guy. And it was, that goes back to what we said about the community, the sense of community and the different generations. Yeah, I was very lucky to meet quite a number of the original people from the whole 60s thing, and. It was really good, and you could feel like the energy just seamlessly flowed through the generations. And the late 1980s thing was like a second flowering. Really. It was. 
because there had been a long hiatus where they really weren't writing anything, they weren't performing, mm -hmm. uh, and so the age became you know, like, like another reincarnation. Mm -hmm. It was really a good time. I had some good opportunities to talk with some people like Wavy Gravy and Ken Kesey and Ken Babs and different people like that and a bunch of other people from that time and yeah, it was really interesting you know because they were really happy in the late 80s to see that this whole energy was coming back again yeah you know? and they were really connected with it with the new generation at that time and yeah of course, there's like the new generation today now as well coming through. And, um, yeah, it's just like a certain kind of energy that people keep passing on. And yeah, I think it comes from before the 60s, of course. It's, it's, sure. deep, it's deeper than all this kind of stuff, even, of course, but it's a certain kind of a creative, positive energy. And it's just like this is a certain branch of it that we've inhabited for a while, like some kind of rare species of rare birds or something. Yeah. I feel fortunate. I think my first show that I went to was 1978 at Alpine Valley. Yeah. My favorite era. So I got, to, I got to see a lot of shows over that time period, right up to Jerry's passing in 1995. Mm. Um, so it was a long, long ride. And it's hard for me to say it's my favorite era, the late 70s, because the late 80s were so damn good. <laughs> yes. Really. And then I say that, you know, and then there's another part of me that's like, no, the late 80s were better. You know? <laughs> but I mean, all the different eras are great in their own ways. And I suppose it depends what mood you're in, which one you want to listen to at a certain time or whatever. But yeah. Mm, but they all do the thing, you know. In, in the right moment, they, they do what they need to do. Yeah, in the human gene. So, where to from here? Well, back to Wisconsin, process some film, make some prints, and uh, mm -hmm. see how my writer's doing. Via Anchor Watt. Via and Anchor Watt. Yes, back. Of course. Yep. Um, and we'll be doing a Zoom interview, you and my writer, mm -hmm. coming up tomorrow. Okay. So, I'll have to tell her all the juicy stories about getting in trouble on Get the Dead Tour then I suppose, huh? Absolutely. If you want to know about all these scandals, make sure you're ready when the book comes out because you'll be able to read about the different people who were photographed and you'll hear some juicy stuff from my past that you might not know about already. Definitely it's interesting. I promise you that. So, and it will be a nice documentation scandals. of a culture. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. It's a, it's a real slice of the real, the real deal. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Thank you. We'll Good see talk you talk in the you. next one. And remember to click subscribe and like, and hit the bell button, of course. All that kind of stuff, if you haven't already. And uh, see you in the next one. One other thing I'll mention oh, what's that? One more thing. is if you think you know somebody that I may have photographed in the past, yeah. go to BillLemke.com and look under Deadheads, see if there's anybody you recognize, because I'm still open to photographing a few more people. That's a good thing to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Almost yeah. forgot. Because there are some people that Bill hasn't got, going to have to track down yet. So look at Bill's website, and if you see anyone you know, try to bring them together with Bill. So Send me a message. Get them in the book before it goes to publishing. Absolutely. All right. See you in the next one. And don't be <laughs> late. Ciao. Ciao.